Hey, what's going on guys? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be taking a look at the Moto G Fast. Now this is a new offering from Motorola and it comes in unlocked at $199. This is fully compatible with US, AT&T, Sprint, T-Mobile, and Verizon networks. Now usually when I do an unlocked phone review, it's a Xiaomi or a Redmi, and a lot of people in the US are kind of skeptical if it's going to work on their network. But with this one here, like I mentioned, fully compatible with AT&T, Sprint, T-Mobile, and Verizon, so you really don't have to worry. And yes, there are higher spec unlocked phones out there. One of my favorites right now is the Redmi Note 9S. It's a great device. It has a Snapdragon 710 and it does outperform this unit here. But most of those are globally unlocked and they'll only work on a GSM network, like let's say T-Mobile in the US. And even then, it's a little hit or miss in your area. So that's one of the big reasons I wanted to pick this up. Overall, I personally love the design of these newer Moto G phones. I own the Moto G7, and it's definitely been a great device. I actually picked up the Straight Talk version when it was on sale at Walmart, and one of the main reasons I picked it up was just to have an extra device for emulation. So you've read the title of this video, and I do want to make it perfectly clear that this is not a full-on review of the Moto G Fast. We're actually going to be taking a look at some benchmarks, some gaming, and some emulation on this device. But I do have to mention, if you want to pick this up as your main phone, it's going to work just fine. It's got a 16 megapixel camera in the rear. I mean, it's definitely not as good as some of the flagship phones, but the price really reflects that. And you really can not compare something like this to a $1,500 Galaxy S20. But as a whole, a lot of these cheaper or low-cost Android devices are getting really, really good. And this one is no exception. It makes phone calls. It makes text. You can get online with it. It's got Wi-Fi built in. It's got 4G connectivity with AT&T, Verizon, and T-Mobile. So if you're on a tight budget and you've been looking for a cheaper phone, I really do think that this is a great option. But before we jump into the testing, I just wanted to go over the basic specs. For the CPU, we have the Snapdragon 665. This is an octa-core CPU. Four cores are running at 2 GHz, and the other four are running at 1.8. 3 gigs of LPDDR4 RAM. For the GPU, we have the Arduino 610. 32 gigabytes of internal storage, plus we have a micro SD card slot, and I've tested up to a 512 gigabyte card, and I know that works for this. The display is a 6.4 inch IPS at 720 by 1560. Now the screen on this isn't going to win any awards whatsoever, but I think it's a decent screen for what you're paying here. It's got a 4000 milliamp hour battery and Motorola says that the battery will last two days and I guess that's just making normal phone calls, maybe a few texts, and checking your Facebook every once in a while. But if you were just straight up streaming video from Netflix at full brightness, I'd say around 13 to 14 hours, which is still pretty good. If you were hardcore gaming on this, I'd say you'd get around 8 hours of gameplay with a game like, let's say, PUBG. Let's go ahead and get the benchmarks out of the way. This is Geekbench 5. On the far left, we have the Moto G Fast, powered by the Snapdragon 665. Right in the middle, the Redmi Note 9 Pro, powered by the Snapdragon 720. And on the far right, we have a gaming phone, the Red Magic 5G, with the Snapdragon 865. This strictly tests CPU performance. We have single core and multi core scores here on screen. Next up, we have 3D Mark Extreme. This tests the GPU power. We have OpenGL on the top and Vulkan on the bottom. Again, the Moto G Fast with the Snapdragon 665 lost out to both of these other phones, but they do have higher end chips built in. And finally, we have Antutu. The Snapdragon 665 managed a score of 162,233 and we're at 26,000 on the GPU. Now, the Redmi Note 9 Pro is the same price as the Moto G Fast, but keep in mind, you can only get them as globally unlocked so it'll only work with certain GSM networks in the US. All right, so the first game we have here is Call of Duty Mobile. This is very well optimized, and as you can see, it's running great on the Moto G Fast. I have the graphics set to medium, and I have the FPS set to extreme. Now, I doubt we're getting a full 60 here, and there's really no way to tell since they've removed Game Bench from the App Store. But as playability goes, it feels fine, and if you want to connect an Xbox One controller over Bluetooth, it will connect to the Moto G Fast. Next up, we have PUBG Mobile, medium settings, extreme FPS, and yet again, I believe we're only sitting around 45 FPS because most of these phones do default to that with this game here, but it is playable. This is another very well optimized game by Tencent, and it's actually trucking along pretty good on the Snapdragon 665.
Fortnite's going to be a hard one to play on this device. I do have the resolution set down as low as we can go, 30 FPS, and I'm not even in battle right now. This is the party mode or whatever it's called, and unfortunately, we just can't stick at 30. It's going to dip down. I've seen it go as low as 11 FPS. Minecraft Pocket Edition, we're set at 12 chunks, fancy graphics is turned on, everything's working great here. And finally, Asphalt 9. Now, I've played this game on a lot of different devices, and on lower end devices, this can be a bit glitchy, but here, we're getting full speed with it. Moving over to a little bit of cloud gaming, we have xCloud, and this is Tekken 7. Now, as long as your connection's good, it's going to work fine. And by the way, the controller I'm using here is the IPEGA 9167. I also wanted to test Google Stadia. Now, when I do load this up, it tells me that it's kind of experimental on this device, but I've played a few games and it works fine. I've also tested GeForce Now, and you'll have no issues with a device like this as long as you have a good internet connection. Now it's time to move over to the emulation section. I will have the FPS listed on screen. I'll also have the name of the system, the name of the emulator, and the name of the game listed so you know what's going on at any given time. And the next couple emulators you're going to see running run perfectly fine on this device, so there's really nothing to be said about it. Everything will be listed on screen. When it comes to PSP emulation, the Moto G Fast actually handles a lot of these games really well. Now, as you see here, I'm using the standalone PPSSPP emulator, and I'm upscaled to 3x, but that doesn't mean we can do 3x with every single game, because when I move over to Tekken 6, I had to take it down to 2x, and by the end, you'll see God of War Chains of Olympus running at 1x. So for the lower end stuff, this phone works great, but when we move up to the higher end emulators like 3DS and Dolphin, the Snapdragon 665 really falls on its face. This is Citra, the 3DS emulator, you can pick it up on Google Play. I've also tried the MMJ build, but I'm getting about the same performance here. Overall, we just don't have enough power to push a lot of these games at full speed. And the same goes for the Dolphin emulator for GameCube and Wii games. This is Super Mario Sunshine, we really haven't even gotten to the game yet. 
and we're not running at 30 FPS. Natively, that's what it ran at on the original GameCube hardware. Now, whenever I do a video like this, I always get people asking me to try the Dolphin MMJ build, but unfortunately, I mean, it's a year out of date. If you check the GitHub, the latest version was published a year ago, so I always resort to going over to the official Dolphin website and downloading the latest development build. That's going to be your best bet. But this little chip just isn't putting out enough juice to run these games at full speed. So in the end, the Moto G Fast does perform pretty well for a $200 device in native Android gaming, cloud streaming, and even emulation. And even though we can't get full speed GameCube and 3DS, I still think this is a solid option if you're looking for an Android device on a budget. Now I do have to say that the Redmi Note 9S or the Redmi Note 9 Pro is definitely a better option at $199 and $225 respectively. But like I mentioned at the beginning, it's a little hit or mess with the networks in the U.S. So if you're out of the U.S. and you're sure that the Redmi Note 9S or the Note 9 Pro is going to work on the network you're on, I would definitely go with that. But if you're looking for something that will definitely work on AT&T, T-Mobile, and Verizon, I think this is a pretty solid option here. But that's pretty much it for this video. I really appreciate you watching. I will leave a few links in the description. If you have any questions or you want to see anything else running on the Moto G Fast, just let me know in the comments below. And like always, thanks for watching.